after stops in Chicago, Tokyo, and Sydney, SLS comes to Sao Paulo, Brazil, the world's fourth largest city with a population of 30 million people, including the most rabid skate fans in the world. We are inside Irabapuera Gymnasium, home to some of the most legendary sporting events of all time in Brazil, from basketball, boxing, the UFC, and on and on. And today, the 2023 SLS Super Crown World Championships knockout rounds. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here in Brazil. I'm Paul Zitzer, along with Sean Malto. Now, before I get to you for picks, predictions, and all that, Sean, let's talk about this format here today in this knockout round. We have the top 12 skaters in the world divided into two knockout groups. The top three skaters from each group will advance to the final to make it six for tomorrow. Simple as that. Let's take a look at knockout round. Group number one, it's an international lineup. Includes skaters like Pamela Rosa, the two-time SLS champ, and new blood, Chloe Cabell coming off two wins so far this year. It is gonna be a battle for those top three spots. Group two, Momiji Nishia from Japan will be skating. She's the Olympic gold medalist, by the way. And of course, Haisa Liao, defending SLS champion from last year in Rio. So it is gonna be a battle here till the finish. Speaking of Haisa, she floats. She can do just about every trick. She's almost unbeatable. She's the defending champ. She's won five stops in a row earlier, but I mean, I think Chloe Cavell saying not so fast. She has the most momentum coming into this event, winning the last two contests in dramatic fashion. I mean, I think this is the best opportunity for her to win her first Super Crown title. Let's not also forget about the smooth skating Momiji Nishia. She's so gnarly, she can skate any obstacle you put in front of her, and she can get tech, just like that crook gnarly heel right here. And let's not forget, she's podiumed every single event this year. And is still yet to win, she could be due. Now let's talk the basics, presented by Tech Deck. There are two sections to Street League, the line section and the single trick section. Each skater will get two 45 second line attempts, followed by five single trick attempts anywhere on the course. The top four scores count towards the final. A skater can use one of their line scores, but it's not required. And then the top three skaters from each of the groups will advance into tomorrow's final. Now it's time to meet the skaters in group number one here in the women's knockout round. Six skaters. Battling for three spots. First skater in from Chandler, Arizona. She's 15 years old. Brand new to SLS this year, Paige Hine. Group photo. First skater in today from Chandler, Arizona. She's only 15 years old, brand new to SLS this year, Paige Hine. And our second skater in, Aoi Oimura from Japan, 14 years old. Incredible talent. Can't wait to see her in. Kids out here going for the Super Crown Championship. And of course, the Brazilian, Pamela Rosa, a two-time Super Crown champ. She's gonna be tough to beat. And then another Brazilian in the house, Marina Gabriela, Primitive's finest, rocking that gold board. Hopefully she can get gold today. Coming all the way from the Netherlands, a consistent 
skater in just about every SLS final, looking for her first Super Crown win. Rose, wet slowed. And our last winner of our contest, Chloe Cavell, coming in, age 13 from Australia. Can't wait. Before we get to the skating, let's check in with the third member of our crew, Andrew Cannon. Thanks, Paul. So behind me, we've got 75 tons of concrete building out this amazing Super Crown course. This course has something for everyone, manual pads, rails. We've got bump to ledge, bump to rail. We've got that square handrail that's equivalent to about a 10 stair, the two piece with the hubba stairs into that little rail or the SLS sign combo. But the big one on there is that kink rail. At 45 and a half feet long, we've only seen one skater so far in practice eyeing it up and trying to grind it. So we'll see if anyone does it here. But let's listen to the skaters break it down in the course preview presented by Rumble Sports. the quick feet setup where it's like the hubba and then the rail or you could go over the sign it's kind of interesting to see like how people skate it it kind of emulates almost a street spot you know so it's kind of dope i like it yeah it's it's always different and i think this has a lot of options especially like the middle part of the skate park because you can do back-to-back -back tricks so that's for me a bit new i think from an ss park uh, the big rails i think are really nice it's square, it's yeah, different than brown, but no, they're really nice, yeah. It's good, I like the hover to like over SLS sign or the hover to like hitting the down rail, it's really fun, two piece. And, yeah, I feel like this park links together really well. Everyone's killing it, like all the girls have been throwing down Pamela Gap to front lip and Smith the big rail. Hayes is throwing down like just her massive tricks and yeah, Momiji, Paige, Mecca, all the girls have been, yeah, really good skaters. I like how Chloe basically listed everyone as ripping, because it's true. <laughs> yeah. They're all out there ripping. It's gonna be a battle to the finish. Three skaters from each group advance. Paige Hine, first in. She's new to the scene. She won exposure this year, though, straight up. 2023, Paige Hine for her first run. She also skates uh, with Jagger Eaton at uh, their local park in Arizona a lot. So I think she has some, some good contest experience with her as well. So I think that's really helped her coming into her first year at Street League. She seems like more of a more of a line skater than individual tricks because she has a lot of really solid tricks and she can mix them up on the fly. Yeah, and her switch skating does set her apart most. So Paige placed second in the select series back in Sydney and then made it into the final. Placed fourth, so just missed the podium there in Sydney. Looking for her first ever podium, and perhaps, who knows? Super Crown Championship, you never know. You never know. I love how she mixed it up. 50 the big rail. She went the bump to Smith grind and threw in the switch front board down the smaller rail. So it had a, had a lot of cool variety in there. 4.3. Setting the pace here in the first of two knockout rounds. Next skater in, Aoi Uimura from Japan. She won, ah, that's a harsh start, but yeah. she won Uprising this year in Tokyo. She beat everyone. That was a stacked field. Too. Yeah. That was a great contest. And there were some big obstacles, and she handled them. Famous for the cow print. Working that everywhere she goes. And we talked about Paige getting second at the Select Series in Sydney. Aoi took the win there in the Select Series. Moved on to the, to the actual 
championship tour event, but did not make finals there. Gary, her feet got tangled up on the rail. is cheering because she's sitting up, now standing up. Brazilian crowd supporting skaters. Psyched to see Aoi back on her feet. Uh, when it comes down to it, though, in the finals, they'll turn on some, some skaters that are not Brazilians real quick. Absolutely. <laughs> Which I like. Okay, Pamela Rosa in for her first of two runs, and she just charges. The crowd knows what they're gonna get from Pamela. She is famous down here. She's in just about every final. If she stays on, she's gonna go. Always looking for the fastest line and the biggest obstacles on the course. Yeah, she is really just known for going as big and as fast as possible. Grew up skating with Kelvin Hoffler. That goes a long way. Talk about figuring out how to skate a contest. Yeah. That's a good mentor. It's time for Pamela's first run. She doesn't seem too shook up about bailing in that run. Once again, you can only take, at most, one of your line scores anyway. So, you want to put down at least one, but if you don't, it's always a good chance you'll make it up next time. Two point five for Pamela, good enough for second place. It's all about finishing the group in the top three. Yeah, this is a this is a good opportunity to play strategy. Because once you get into the finals, that's when you really have to just go the hardest you can. But right now, you can look, see what everyone's doing, and just try to get in that top three spot. Skater in next, Marina Gabriela from Brazil. She's replacing Funa Nakayama, who's out with an injury. So Marina got the late call up. Get on out here, you're skating. She is in. This is her seventh, seventh SLS appearance ever. She's still yet to make a final. I mean, I think her skating, it, it's just one of those, one of those people that just needs the right course, because her skating is like, very tech, raw, street style. So you get the right course, and I feel like she can do really well, and she's putting it together right now. How about this course? I like this course for her. The bump to ledges, the little manual pads on the side. It does seem to have something for everyone. It's got the big rails. Yeah. It's, got the, it's got the massive double kink, and then it does have the smaller stuff. So, Tech, Nar, what have you. That's such a good kickflip. One of the best in the game. Perfect. Fatty to flatty, over the double kink. It's the crack and drop. 2.7. Good enough for second. Aoi bumped into fourth. Coming in next will be Rose Zwetslow 
from the Netherlands. She finished third in Chicago this year and third in Tokyo. So she has had a great year so far. Oh, little crook went to backside nose grind. She is the Dutch national champion. Which says a lot, because there are great skaters in the Netherlands, like Candy Jacobs, Kate Oldenboving. Yeah. Solid. Throwing a little Manny in there. I like the little manual. I think that kind of goes a long way in your life. Now, do you think it equals enough points to mess with them? I think so. I mean, like we've seen before, a lot of these contests come by or come down to very minimal point scale. So True. I think anything helps. Yeah. But from a pure skating perspective, you're right. Use the course, it's there. Yeah. If you can show you got something for it, you should do it. Final skater in this first group. She wearing a Michael, Michael Jordan shirt? <laughs> Looks like it. All right, I like her odds. Right. <laughs> it's Chloe Cabell coming off back-to-back -back wins. She's a phenom from Australia, where, I mean, skate culture in Australia runs deep. So coming off a history of great skateboarding down there, she's keeping the, keeping the torch lit. She's just a kid. She's one of the only skaters that's shown she can take Isa off that top spot. I mean, also winning in her hometown, that is so much pressure. She, she's so consistent with the tech tricks. She has ice in her veins. Oh, spoke too soon. Yeah, and going back to that Sydney performance, it was the last three tricks. She bailed her first two yeah. and had three goes left and made them all for the win. That was incredible. She knows how to handle it. I mean, we look back to last year. She was a rookie in her first ever SLS stop. She placed second, almost won. So it was like, from there, Future paved in gold. Look at that, with a fall, still in that top spot with a 5.2. Yeah, she knows her way around a street course, that's for sure. She's figured it out. First runs are in the books. SLS 2023 Championship Tour has been an absolutely great season. First stop, it was Brazil all the way, Isa and Kelvin. Tokyo, followed, Chloe stepped in there and then Yuto took it home for the home crowd. And then in Sydney, Chloe kept it going and then Felipe Gustavo with the performance of a lifetime, got his first ever SLS win after a decade of skating in SLS. And then here we are in Sao Paulo. So that's the graphic. Let's give you the highlights in the look back presented by Kerry Yuma.
the look back presented by Carrie Yuma. You see the the progression in women's skateboarding has been off the charts. Sean, Sean, you and Andrew had Haley Wilson in the booth in Sydney, and she has been on the SLS tour for many years, and she really drove the point home. She's blown away at how good everyone has become over the last few years, and you see it there on that look back. Yeah, the talent level is just skyrocketed. Good to see. It's been fun to watch. Paige Heim back in for her second of two runs. She's in second place with a 4.3, nine-tenths of a point behind Chloe Cavell. Just getting that 180 got away from her a little bit, but. Let's see if she goes back to it. I'm also gonna argue with Andrew on, on that rail. I don't think that's a standard 10 stair rail. Yeah, it's kind of like a quadruple set. I, I stood up top of that thing. It's more like 12, 13. It's not super high to get on, but it is long. Long and mellow. Yeah. So Paige Hine, really what she's trying to do is better her 4.3 from her first run. And catch Chloe's 5.2. But the 3.5 doesn't get it done. Moving on to Aoi. She is taking this run after that crazy slam in her first run. She's got a smile on her face, so she seems to be in one piece at least. Let's see how she goes. Oh, looking solid so far. The crowd is feeling it too. She had a 1.5 on her first run because it was cut way short. If she can stay on, it's gonna improve. She's doing it. Right. See if she goes back to this back lip. That's the question. She does and she makes it. <laughs> Props. As she was rolling up, she looked a little shaky to me, too. I, I was mean, worried. I don't blame her. She basically did worst case scenario on a back lip the first run. Full body. And handled it this time, though. That's awesome. Props to Aoi. Full run, no falls. A lot of variety and the big finish. I mean, she went way over to the other side on that. She was like, she definitely didn't want to undershoot again. No. All right, so she's going to see a huge improvement in that 1-5. Where does she land? Beautiful, 5.0 even. That's good enough for second place. Bumps Rose into fourth and Paige down into third. Now, before Ro Pamela drops in, we're going to send it down to Andrew Cannon. Thanks, Paul. I had the opportunity to talk to all the skaters out there beforehand. Almost all of them said they were super nervous about that. You know, big crowd here in Brazil. The only skater that was like, not nervous, can't wait, this is amazing, is Pamela. And she was saying she is so excited about the course and these massive bump to bars. We saw her kind of lining up for it at the end of that last line. Fingers crossed we'll see her get it in this one. Back to you. Thank you, Andrew. She comes off going over the SLS shield. But, Sean, we talk about the psychology of skating in these contests. It doesn't, at the end of the day, sometimes it doesn't matter how good you are. You have to be good mentally dealing with skating in front of this crowd. And if you can come into it with the mindset that you're excited about it versus nervous, I mean, that goes a long way. Absolutely, and for her, she's been in these scenarios more than most of this entire field. It's true. So she knows how to handle her nerves, she knows how to handle her skating, and that run getting away from her, but 
like Andrew said, that big bump to bar feature that she almost lip slid, that's going to go a long way for single tricks. And the last time we were in Sao Paulo, she won the contest, Super Crown Champ. Boom. Yeah. She's no stranger. No big deal. But you're right. She finds lines that other skaters I don't know if they can't do it or won't do. It doesn't matter, but she'll be the only one, right? I think so, yeah. Marina Gabriella in for her second of two runs. Down in fifth place. Sticking the kick flip over the shield. <laughs> Bus up. Count it. Yeah. Contest make. And there's there's such a huge difference between hanging on to those and, and coming off. It's everything. I mean, yeah, it wasn't pretty, but it counts and she's still on her board and rowing, stacking up points rather than getting those balls in your head, losing points. Still going. Tray flip. She is tippy toeing all over this run. And you know, I mean, that's one of the awesome things about skating is like, in some ways, that's just as good as making it perfectly. I loved it. I thought it was great. You know, she was filming for the new Primitive video. She might have wanted to do a couple of those tricks over again, but it's not that. No. Sometimes when it's live, you take anything you can get. You don't need to be perfect. No. You just need to stay on. No. We can relate. Three point one. So she stays in fifth place, improves the score slightly. Rose sitting in fourth place, trying to move back up into the top three. You have to finish your group in the top three or you go home. Not the shortest flight for Rose though, so she wants to be in that top three. <laughs> Uh. Rose, a Karayuma athlete, trying to finish strong out here, but not getting it done in her second run. She's probably going to get stuck with that 4.1, which is only good enough for fourth place right now. So she's going to have to look to the single tricks. But we've seen it many times. You can do it. It's just there's more pressure on each time. Yeah, and she's only .2 out of that third, so she's close. I think she's in a good spot to make a run at it. We're going to ignore that one. Chloe Cabell. Current leader with a 5.2, no surprise. She's been so consistent in the line sections the last two events. It's been crazy. Sit back and see if she can keep it going here in the Super Crown. Women's knockout round, group one of two. Ah, oh, that, there's a quick setup between that bump to bump and then that Euro gap. There's not a lot of space on this course. You have to have quick feet. Chloe proving she can get it done, no problem. Yeah, you don't see uh, you don't see a lot of frontside flips in runs either. Wow! All day, all year. Ugh. <laughs> Time. You know, it was interesting looking back also to Sydney, where. Her second run was kind of a write-off, but she still threw in some hammers. And it was the question was, would she have more for the single tricks? And then she proved that I was like, yeah, she's got more. So Yeah, and she definitely learned from an event before when she kind of ran out of tricks towards the end. But she's proven to tailor her runs to learn from that experience, and now she's the most dominant person out here. 5.2 back to back. So that's not going to do her any 
good, but that is solid. Two 5.2s going into single tricks in first place here in the Super Crown. Women's knockout round group one. You are watching Street League Skateboarding from Brazil. We'll be back with single tricks coming up. Street League Skateboarding is brought to you by BB Seguros, para tudo que importa. By São Paulo é esporte, São Paulo é lazer, São Paulo são todos. By Accelerator Active Energy, the official energy drink of Street League Skateboarding. And by Cariuma, old school sneaker, new school ethics. Championships from Sao Paulo, Brazil, brought to you by BB Seguros. In Portuguese, they call it the Jungle of Stone, and you can see why. Look at that. Cityscape goes on for miles. As we all know, we're here at the Super Crown, the win that these skaters are chasing all season long. So we asked the skaters to explain what the Super Crown means to them, and here's what they had to say in this Cup Noodles SLS Pro Perspective. I would say the Super Crown means more to me um, because, I don't know, you know, it's, it's the final one, you know, it's the Big Bang, it's the, it's the, the championship. Everybody fighting for that top spot, the Super Crown, you know, that gold trophy be shining. I think it does bring out the extra edge for people though, like to really go hard and try to win that. Also, not many people have won that. It's pretty much been the same winners since the event started. And I just won so many. I've won one, Shomoto won one, but it's like, yeah, there hasn't been many. Super Cal para mim é uma competição muito muito importante porque ali a junta muitas skatistas. É, muitas mulheres do mundo inteiro. Eu acho que Street League é muito especial. É, se torna muito especial quando lá em casa. Acho que por ser no Brasil vai ser uma experiência assim... É sempre uma experiência assim de outro mundo. Só de estar com a família, só de estar com a torcida. É algo que deixa a gente muito feliz. E a torcida no Brasil é totalmente diferente. Eu acho que é um dos campeonatos assim que é mais importante do ano. Brazilian crowds are insane. Yeah, they just love skateboarding. I've never skated a Super Crown before, so it'll be my first one. But yeah, it should be pretty sick. They, they, they really be like getting all the skaters stoked and just making us, you know, want to just turn up. So I'm, I'm excited to be back in an arena with that type of crowd and that type of energy and just, you know, go for it. We are about to drop in to single tricks. But first, the re-rack brought to you by Ba Clothing. What you're seeing here is the start order now, which is the reverse order of the current ranking of the skaters here in group one. So Pamela Rosa from Brazil will be coming in first, because she's in sixth place. Chloe Cavell, skating last, current leader. Pamela kind of in an in unfamiliar territory here in sixth place, but no big. She's got this. She loves it. She's ready for it. Straight to the massive lip slide. And I, I hear Andrews claiming that's just a 10. Still claiming it. I, I still think that's bigger than a 10. <laughs> All right, here we go. She's coming from the bump side, which means she's got a gap out to it also. Yeah, that gap is bigger than it looks, too. It's a little awkward because you feel like you want to go right over the, the top knuckle part of the rail, making it super long, but bump to lip. She did it perfect, and the score is 7.0. Right back in the mix, by far the highest score of the day, higher than any line we've seen so far. Marina, Gabriella in next. Now she's in sixth place. It's the top three skaters from each group to move on. Out of the two groups then, 
We'll have six skaters in tomorrow's final. Rose Wetzlow in fifth place. Coming in for her first single trick attempt. Crooks like nothing. Easy. So how does a crooks from the from the short side stack up to the lip from the from the far side? I mean the short side's definitely a lot safer. I think crook might be a little more technical, but it's I don't know, I, I can't see it being higher than a seven. I think this is kind of a stock standard trick for a lot of these girls. Um, I think, yeah, 5.8. I think that's a solid, good score for that. Paige Hine coming in next. She's in fifth. The first single trick. Solid. Front Smith. What's uh, Smith versus Crooks? Apple and apples and oranges, or what? Apples and oranges. Personally, I think Smith on a square rail like that, it puts the kingpin in a lot of danger of sticking. Um, also, it's kind of hard for it to not roll over into a lip slide because the square can can kind of, I don't know. It's hard to lock it in, but yeah, six point oh. Judges feel like it's a little higher than. I guess it's more risky, so I'll give them that. Aoi, Uimura, the comeback kid here so far today. Ooh, nice choice. Bump out to back lip. I mean, this is our first look at this obstacle as singles, and I'm not sure. It's, it's one of those things, bump over, back lip down the rail. Definitely a hard trick. I just don't know if they're going to score it as high as skating that big section rail. You're right. 4-9. Yeah. Last skater in these first attempts. Waiting in the wings, Chloe Cavell. Coming off of two really solid lines. Easy one for Chloe, but that is that's a big kickflip. That's a big kickflip. I mean perfection. It's like she made it before she took off. It's the way she skates. Just checking them off. That was just a kick turn for her, but I think that's definitely the one of the better tricks to go down so far. There you go, 7.3, that is a huge score. Chloe showing why she's won the last two stops straight out the gate here in Sao Paulo. Download True Skate on your mobile and enter the live Super Crown event. Complete all the missions in the event to unlock a virtual replica of this year's championship course. Play now to skate the Super Crown, just like the SLS pros. That's true skate. How much time do you spend gaming, Sean, versus real skating? I, I mean, during the pandemic, it was yeah. a lot, but lately I've been outside. I gotta get back on true skate. Not me, yeah, I've been in the basement. Yeah. I've been handling <laughs> true skate like such a champ, yeah. killing it, dude. I'll challenge you and your boys any day. Are we gonna have a true skate yeah. contest? We might. All right. Super crown you to yeah. your face. Can we get uh, the super crown money on the line with that? I'll put in a request. All right. Pamela Rosa, talking strategy over there. It's like, I'm in fifth place, what am I doing? It's like, hey. Like, Pamela, you're out of timeout, so you gotta get up there. <laughs> So once again, Pamela, first skater in after the re-rack. She's working her way up though after that 7.0 gap out to lip slide. And we know we're gonna get more of that. Yeah. Where does she go next? Where does she go from here, I mean, she's always on the tallest part of the course every single time. I think she got that, uh, I think she got that taking her time. She learned that one from Kelvin. Uh, mm. What happened? It looked like a make. It looked like a make, but sometimes when you when you gap out to a rail like that, you try to stretch it 
just to make sure you don't hang up, and I think it, she just pushed it a little too far. Can't be mad at that, because no. the last thing we want to see is a hang up on the top of that. That's going to be, that might be the last hang up you ever hang up yeah, on. Yeah, rule number one. <laughs> Overshoot than Stretch undershoot. It. Yeah. Marina Gabriela from Brazil, filling in for Funa. She's out with an injury. She got closer this time on the kickflip, but kind of what? Needs to wax the wheel wells? Yeah, just one of those things. I mean, skating's like that. You could do everything right and not land it. Rose, still outside the top three. Tied, though. Tie breaks go to the highest scored line, line score. It's the first tie break, so always got to look to that. But I mean, there's a little bit of strategy here. Rose coming in with the front smith. As opposed to Pamela, she didn't gap out to it. No, but she, she saw front smith, knew what she was going to get. Just smart strategy. Six. Rose, current leader. Paige Hine in third place. Needs a 5.7 to move into that top spot. Oh my god. That's a heavy move. I was curious if she was going to be able to step to that and switch front board is hefty on that rail. She had it. I feel like a, a switch front board is really easy to, to pose, really hard to commit to from the get-go. I think it's one of the easier tricks to airball for whatever reason. Mm. It just seems like hard to keep the board under. It's, under it's, a, it's a tough one to commit to. Aoi, in. She looks a little hurt. She is powering through. Back to Chloe. It's so fun to see what she just tries. What is she gonna go for next? I have no idea. Could it be a grind to flip trick? Could it be a flip trick to, to some sort of handrail I mean, slide? We know the switch flip is in there. Oh, oh. feeble shootout. I like when she uh, just threw out that front side flip down the big set in Sydney. That was impressive. Yeah. I think for Chloe, though, she has to just look. All she needs is top three. I don't think she needs to, you know, go for the win here. Crowd is behind Pamela Rosa, and she sticks the front Smith. Yeah, she's the one stepping to the bump to rail. That's where the points are. Go get them. I mean, you might as well skate the biggest thing in the skate park if you're going to skate it. But bump, front smith. That's the BB Seguros replay. Grinded a lot of that rail, too. Boom, Pamela. First place for now. So Smith grind from the bottom got a six. So that's 1.2 higher. It's kind of a lot. Marina Gabriella in next. She's in sixth place. She's got to stick this kickflip right here. No. Nope. Uh, and that is essentially probably going to seal her fate. It's almost impossible to advance out of the group without making at least three tricks and having a solid line score. Rose sitting pretty comfortably in second place. Stick in the front board. What I see from Rose today so far is Smart strategy. Smart. I mean, look, you, you can't win a contest today, but you can definitely lose it. 
<laughs> That's a good point. You might as well just get into the top three, secure your spot. And she has skated enough SLS events to know where the points are, how she can get them. She's handling it like a veteran. 3.4 for the front board. Moving up into first place, 19.3, Paige Hine. Wow. Beautiful. Switch front board. Perfect. She got all the way on top of that one, too. Switch front board. Yeah, you see it's like right in the middle of her board. The first one was just a little saggy towards the front truck, but that one was perfect. So a 2.3 puts her up into those top three spots. A 7.3 moves her into second place. Top three skaters in each group Bumping. will advance to tomorrow. Bumping Chloe out. Chloe's not worried. No. Chloe's going to get that front feeble and go from there. Wow. Oh. All the way back, Smith. That's a trick. Especially on a long, mellow square rail. So much could go wrong. She locked that perfect. Dipped. A 6.9. Is she on the we'll phone? Move her into the top three. <laughs> She's like, I did it. I made it. Yeah. Phoning in the coach. 7.1. She does it. Now she's in the top three. Pamela Rosa just got bumped into fourth. Chloe Cavell in fifth. But she doesn't need a lot of points to be right back in the mix. She just needs to make her tricks. It's as simple as that. There. Oh, there you go. Front feeble. I, I personally think that that was way riskier than what she needed to do. But now she's set up. She's chilling. Front feeble. Down the big rail. This should be a really solid score. We see the way different people react in these situations. When the pressure's on, Chloe's a skater that answers the call almost every try. There you go, 7.1, she's back up in the lead. And I think she may have already sealed her spot. We'll find out. Pamela Rosa. Brooks. Easy for her, easy. Point eight. Pamela is back on top with a 22.5. The veteran showing these kids what's up. <laughs> Here's how you get it done. She still has one try left in the single tricks. Now, we've seen this happen a lot of times with skaters. Now it's a battle for Pride, respect, you just want to make the trick. Yeah, especially Gabriella just in her hometown. Bummer. So close. Rose in the top three, but not comfortably at all. A 6-7 moves her in the lead gap from Blunt, Ooh. taking the chance. It almost paid off. What happened? It's just got a little ahead of the board right there. It was really close, though. I like definitely like her odds of making that on her next attempt.
really curious on where Paige is going to go with this. Paige Hine outside looking into that top three. Wow. Taking the risk with the switch front 50. She's going to have one try left. That's a big switch grind. Yes, it is. That is huge. Switch front 50 takes what I, what I would say is an insane amount of commitment. You got to just throw those shoulders and go. Yeah, it takes a lot more pop than the switch front board, and you're putting in a lot of risk. Aoi Uimura. Wow. She answers Pamela's gap lift. For her to take that back lip slam and to keep going back to that rail, she is yeah. gnarly. I mean, maybe, maybe it's, hey, I already took the slam. <laughs> I got it, got it out of the way. I mean, good for the day. You ever think I, like that? I never think like that, but I'm glad she is. <laughs> maybe not, maybe she's yeah. just gnarly. She is the <laughs> new leader with a seven even. I would love to have a mic with her on that phone call. What is she talking about? I, I think she might be talking strategy. Okay. Well, whatever she's doing, it's working. A Andrew, get in, get on that. Find out what I always talking on the phone about. Oh, Chloe, just coming in, handling Backsmith. It's too easy for her. It's too easy. There's no hesitation. And then look at how she pops out. When she locks in, she lifts up early just to make sure. Yeah, total control, top total to bottom. Total control. So 4-5 moves Chloe back into the lead. So we'll see in the lead, Chloe. There's one try left for everyone. Thus, we're gonna do another re-rack after we get Chloe's score for the final tries. Presented by Ball Clothing. Last trick attempt. Here's the order. Marina Gabriella will be coming in first. And Chloe Cavell will have the honors having last go. Remember, top three skaters advance right now. It's the three on the bottom of your screen there. Pamela, Aoi, and Chloe. This format is so good, where every group is a mini final. Exciting start to finish. I love it. Yeah, I love it too. And then also the re-rack. I think the re-rack is so important. Yeah. But props to Matt Rodriguez at Street League for masterminding that format change. Yeah. They made a lot of really good tweaks over the years. He never sleeps. It's just like no. format all the time. He calls in the middle of the night. Hey, I got a, a format update. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. What do you think? I love it. Can't wait to bother him with our true skate <laughs> contest idea. Comes down to this for Paige. She has to land this trick right here to get into the top three. Switch front 50. She sticks it. Oh, my God. Oh, and Pamela Rosa on that bubble spot in third. She's going to be watching this score closely and may have to answer. This is for sure higher than a five, but she came so close. That back truck barely locked in. Toe side on the back truck. Oh, she really did just grease that onto the Barely, rail. Barely, but in a contest, it's perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. What's it going to be? 8.3. That is the highest score of the day so far. That puts Paige in second and Pamela into fourth place. Pamela is going to have to make her final trick. But first, Rose Wetslow, another skater outside the top three. Needs an 8.2 here. Oh. She 
fully went all in, heel flip front board. That could have been it. A valiant effort for Rose. It's not gonna be enough this time. She will not be skating tomorrow. Getting props from Chloe. She had an amazing season though, looking back at everything, so. <laughs> 2019 Super Crown champ trying to get back to the finals. Can she do it? She needs to land this trick right here. Uh, doesn't get it done. No. Oh, and she came out so strong, did so much in her first two runs. Looks so comfortable on this course. And the field is set. The only thing we don't know is the order of the finish here. 7.7 .7 moves our way into first. Oh, Bennett! Nice choice. It's not gonna happen. Taking the bow, well deserved. Respect. Arigato, Aoi. So she is going to finish in third place. Chloe gets to take a victory lap trick. Victory trick. Victory trick. In the group, top three will advance officially to tomorrow. the signature that is like that's become her signature trick from it's definitely kick. won her a lot of contests so far yeah. name your spot she's gonna bust it Fifty-fifty 50 kickflip out on the round rail i think it's a smart choice to do this see what the score is just so you know for the finals but it's crazy how good of a pop she can get out on a round rail Seven point three. What a group. Number one, putting it down. Top three, moving on to tomorrow. No surprises with Chloe Cavell delivering when it counts, skating like a veteran. The three skaters advancing into tomorrow's final from group number one. Chloe Cavell finishing in first. Paige Hine getting it done again. SLS rookie and an even more of a rookie, Aoi Uimura from Japan. Making it into the Super Crown Final. We have group two coming up. Here are the skaters we're gonna see. Six skaters battling for three spots. Mariah Duran, USA, followed by Kate Oldenboving from the Netherlands. Isabelle Avila, Brazil. Yumika Oda, Japan, and Momiji. And then finally, Haisa Leal, defending Super Crown Champion from 2022. Three of these skaters in group two We'll move on to tomorrow. Who's it going to be? Can't wait to find out. Picks. Sean, any picks? Picks for top three? I mean, I, I don't think there is a chance at all Haisa does not make this finals. Yeah, I agree. I think she's a lot. <laughs> she could skate at 50% in advance. Street League Skateboarding Super Crown World Championships women's winners from the last four years. We got Brazil back to back to back with Aisa last year, Pamela Rosa the last two years before that, and then way back in 2018, feels like a lifetime ago before COVID, Aori Nishimura. Doing it for Japan.
Last time we were here in Sao Paulo, we watched Pamela Rosa and Haisa Leal go head to head on the home turf. Let's travel back in time to 2019 and watch the highlights of that epic showdown in this G-Shock time capsule. Street League Skateboarding is brought to you by Tech Deck, Start Small, Go Big By G-Shock, the official timekeeper of Street League Skateboarding By Tiger, manobras ousadas pedem coragem Mais uma vez, Tiger é a cerveja oficial do SLS And by TrueSkate, download TrueSkate and unlock the Super Crown course to play like a pro Welcome back, everybody, to Sao Paulo, Brazil. You want street spots? They're down there. There's thousands of miles of them. One of the greatest cities in the world. Biggest, that's for sure. This is the SLS Super Crown World Championships presented by BB Seguros. It's the women's knockout round, group number two. Here are the skaters. In this group, Mariah Duran, Kate Oldenboving, Isabel Avila, Yumika Oda, Momiji Nishia, and Haisa Leal. Of those six skaters, three will be moving on to the finals, depending on what happens next. Now let's talk the basics, brought to you by Tech Deck. There are two sections, the street league, the line section, and the single trick section. Each skater gets two 45 second line attempts, followed by five single trick attempts anywhere on the course. A skater's top four scores count towards their final score, with a maximum of one line score counting, but it's not required. And then the top three skaters in each group advance to the final. We already saw the first group. Business handled. Now it's time to meet the skaters in group number two. First skater in, the veteran here in this group, age 26 from Albuquerque, New Mexico. A raw street skater can also hold it down in a contest. That's Mariah Duran. Second in, Keith Oldenboving from Utrecht, 19, and she's been in these positions many times before, so we'll see if she can handle it this time. Third skater in, Isabella Yavila from Brazil. She won the Select Series right here in Sao Paulo to earn her spot. And then from Japan, 17-year-old Yumika Oda. Also from Japan, 16-year-old from Osaka. It's the Olympic gold medalist, Momiji Nishia. Nothing more needs to be said other than she rips. Last but not least, Probably the most famous skateboarder on the planet right now, Aisa Liao. Let's send it down to Andrew. Thanks, guys. I'm down here with Paige Hine. Paige, what a great performance right there. You fell on the Switch 50. What was going through your head as you were rolling up for that last attempt? Um, I was super nervous because it was my last attempt to get into the finals, but I'm so excited to be here, and I can't wait for tomorrow. Amazing. Now, you get to hang out and just watch. Who are you excited to see in this group? Um, I'm excited to watch all the girls, but mostly Momiji. What is it about Momiji that you really like? Her style, her tricks, uh, just looks good when she skates, and it's so fun to watch. All right, well, listen, last but certainly not least, do you have anything up your sleeve you're going to be bringing into the finals tomorrow? Um, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> all right, well, we like that answer. We're excited to see. Guys, back up to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrew. Yeah, Paige getting it done as a straight-up rookie handling it. Yeah, and then she gets to watch. She gets to see what these next skaters are going to do in this heat, see if she needs to tailor her plan a little bit. Also, Andrew, 
Looking good. He's matching the course with his shirt today. He's always looking good. You, you don't think that was on accident, huh? No, no, no. way. <laughs> He's like the new Felix. <laughs> Felix used to match his, his outfits to the spots. Yeah. Nine club. All right, Mariah Duran is in for her first of two runs. Two-time U.S. national champ. She skated in the Olympics. She comes from a skate family. Her brother's ripped too. She, she skates ditches and streets in Albuquerque. She's rad. She is the best. One of my favorite <laughs> skaters. And she just went on a Thrasher trip a couple years ago, and she killed it in the streets and really, like, solidified herself as one of the best skateboarders out there. Not only is she super tech, but she's also a tech deck athlete. So, boom. Wow. Did we mention the hard flip she's got? It's like multo level, straight up. Oh, I think she surpassed that for sure. There's, I mean, there's peaks, so you guys are both that. at the top of the mountain. That's such a good combo right there, straight into the front feeble. I loved her run. Flip tricks, tech tricks, mm -hmm. skating the big section to end it. 4.8. I'm not gonna lie, I would have given her a higher score if I was a judge. Me too, it's always hard though, first one out in the heat. You know, they, that's like the baseline, so. Sometimes you gotta throw out a high score. I, I trust me, <laughs> I text Mike but, Mo right now, I hey. thought it should have been a little higher. It's easy for us to yeah. say that though. They're, they're, they're studying, they're keeping real strict track of what's happening, so no disrespect. Sometimes I just like to see a high score. Yeah, me too. All right, Kate Oldenboving, the Netherlands. The scene out in Europe is so good. They've got spots too. They're crusty. If you're gonna skate spots in the Netherlands though, you're gonna be rumbling over some cobblestone to get to a marble ledge or something. Kate handles it. They've got great, great parks out there though. Shout out to Pier 15 Skate Park, one of the best skate parks yeah. in the world. Shout out to Nord in Amsterdam. That's another one. Oh, so great. Nord is great. Yeah. Such a fun place to be. Let's shout out Uyghur Van Wagenen. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we're Van Wagenen. Love Uyghur. Great. Amazing, talented skateboarder and one of the best pool players I've ever played against. Really? Yeah. They're cleaning up the course right now. You don't want to slip out in some sweat or some spilled accelerator energy drink on the course. No. Nope. Mm -mm. Keep it tight. There's a shot of Isabelli Avia from Brazil. She'll be skating momentarily, but Kate will be coming in first. The course is clear. All right. Sonia Catalano can rest in peace. Boom. Kate is in. Did you see her consistency rate? No. 92%. That's high. That's, me that's messed up. That is the best I've seen. That's like dribbling a basketball or something, yeah. not skateboarding stats. Oh, that's definitely going to hurt the stat sheet right there. Yeah, drop down to 91. Yeah. Oh, 90. Uh, sometimes it's best to call it. Sometimes it's best not to, though. It's best to get back on the horse, finish the run with something good, build a little momentum into the next run. Yeah. So that is going to be a total throwaway for Kate. So on deck, Isabelli. From Brazil, crowd's going crazy as we speak. She is our SLS Select Series winner. And this is the SLS Select Series recap presented by BB Seguros. So, 
a qualifier right here in Sao Paulo for one spot into today's knockout rounds, trying to make it in the final, so anyone could have won their way in here. I mean, a qualifier in Brazil might as well be like a finals. Yeah, for real. The talent level here is incredible. But there is a vast difference between skating in a local qualifier and then skating in an arena like this with a full house. Yeah. Nerve wracking. The Select Series has been a cool addition to this year. We talked about the format. That's another addition. It's giving people from the area one chance to win their way in and skate on the, on the stage of SLS. That's cool. I mean, it's really cool. We've literally seen the Select Series change people's lives, you know? I'm pretty sure Yuto came through a Select Series. I can look at him now. It's wild. Paige is doing that same thing. Katie did it. Yeah, it's cool to see that system work and integrate new talent and then just watch them blossom. Yumika Oda coming in next. She got fifth place in Chicago and in Tokyo. So no rookie, no stranger to the finals, trying to get back there here in the Super Crown. She's the skater with the highest score, 9.4 trick, a kick lift from feed. Yep. She won Damn Am Japan earlier this year, too. That was uh, another just top-notch event with all the talent. Ooh, nolly flip up the up the Euro. That might have been on the side of the Euro, but regardless, a great nolly flip. It's an extra level attack. Cap from Feeble. Yumika travels the world with Momiji and Funa. Unfortunately, Funa's not skating this weekend due to injury. But Momiji is. It's good to skate with your friends. Yeah, especially when you're doing it at the highest level. Nice combo. Gap front feeble. Yeah, you could kind of see it with all, all three of them. 5.5, solid run score, gets her into the first spot. But Yumika, Momiji, and Funa, their talent level has just consistently rose throughout the years. They, could, they can sweep podiums, let's put it that way. Easily. And Momiji, you heard Paige men mention her. Coolest style, most relaxed, great trick selection. Blessed. Blessed. I mean, I think a lot of her style comes with confidence, though. Doesn't look like she's... Doesn't look like she's nervous. She doesn't hesitate. Everything looks done with intention. And when you've won the Olympics, everything after that probably feels a little easier. True. That was her first big win. Like she'd been, she'd been around not very long, and then boom, won the Olympics. But surprisingly enough, has yet to win an SLS stop. Yeah, just and saying. For skateboarding, SLS wins are, are yeah. up there with, with the best. Yeah, absolutely. But good chance she'll get there this weekend. But um, she's got to go up against Chloe, against Haisa. Yumika, 6.2, yeah. look at that score. And first and foremost has to get out of this group. That's right. Yeah, so, and sometimes making it into the final is more difficult than the final itself. I agree. Haisa, on deck. It's fun to watch her skate. Wow. 
making it look too easy. High trip on how high her front foot is when she ollies. It's really, it's like almost up on the front bolts. She has so much control about this there. Isa, the Bebo athlete, with 10 seconds left. April dunk grips right there. Crowd knows. Just so fun to, to watch. Start it with the back lift. And this look kind of gets a little swirly. Almost goes primo. Waiting on a massive score. How high will it go? 7.6. <laughs> nice setup. Back to the top of the order. Mariah Duran had a great first run. Not good enough for the top three at the moment. Can she bump it up? Uh, kick flip Willie. I know she's going 50 or maybe 5-0, yeah. but that happens. It's the worst feeling. <laughs> yeah. Hard one to aim. So Mariah Duran will not improve on that 4.8. When you make every trick on your first run and then you fall on your second run, that's it. I mean, you already know. Yeah. Try to spend a little time skating in front of the crowd. Every second kind of help. It can help your mindset. It can also send you down into a dark <laughs> spiral. <Yeah>. But, <laughs> we're we're going to focus on the positives yeah. here. <laughs> Kate, on deck, traveling the world. Her dad, her dad is a huge supporter, takes her everywhere. I, I see him all over the place, rad dude, fully supportive. Stays out of her business, too. He's not like a coach. Just say, hey, do your thing, tear it up. I'm going to chill back here, maybe have a beer. Yep, that's how it should be. Yeah. All right, setting up for a restart. Yeah. Clock doesn't start until you pop your tail in. So. Backboard. Now it's official. It's pretty insane how strong the Dutch scene is. That's a small country. They got a lot of great skaters coming out of there all the time. All the time. Uh, it's crazy. She cleared that. Doing the Greco style back three yeah. also. Front foot going loose. Not the snowboard oh. one. No. And I prefer this one. Props. Oh, what? The running man? Late for the bus? What you got? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they might dock points for that. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Jimmy Grecki's like, we don't do that yeah. in Philly, man. You do that in Love Park, we send you home. Exactly. <laughs> Billy might like it, though. He's like, if you'd have grabbed it beef, I might have given it an extra yeah. point. <laughs> 
<laughs> Shout out to the SLS judges. That is, that is legit a very difficult job. We say that, but we mean it. It's no fun. No. They, all get, you, yeah. they get put in awkward situations yeah. all the time. L they lose every time, yeah. <laughs> no matter what the results are. All right, Isabelli in. Struggled on her first run, trying to make up for it here. Clean, gap 50. Front five out. <laughs> Isabelli has had the chance to skate a few SLS events in the past. Never made a final though, but this year had to win her way into this spot through that select series. I think she got that one in there too. But what, kind of clipped the truck or something on the way out of it. It just does look a little nervy for her still out there. How did you deal with nerves in a contest? Or how do you? Do you have any little tricks that you do in your mind? I mean, you just try to breathe your way through it. But I always tried to start with something I knew I was gonna land just to start to feel my board, kind of see where I'm at. But it just, it takes a few contests to even figure out what your body's, how it's gonna react. You're right, you're yeah. right. And then sometimes you try things and they don't work. And yeah. then you have, to, you have to adjust for the next time. Think about it in between. Yumi Oda on course, sitting in third place. Yeah, she knows exactly how the board's gonna react under her feet right now. Look at this. Such a good nollie flip. No sign of nerves at all. No, but that's the difference of being in this position over and over and over again versus, you know, inexperience. One thing I did too is I never flipped my board. <laughs> At all or I, first trip? Unless I absolutely had to, but I was like, nope. Interesting. <laughs> what would be your go-to flip trick, though? At the time, probably a nollie flip. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. Tray flip in a contest? I've been known, but I don't. Okay. I mean, you could see Nigel, he's never missed a tray flip ever. I know. It's so crazy. For real. Never, ever. Momiji. In, sitting in second place, had a great first run. Anything better than that 6.2 will help. Probably may not need anything better than that, as long as she can keep the momentum going into the single tricks. I'm so that's a huge score. Yeah, but I'm surprised Yamika did the exact same run. She had nothing to lose with trying to improve it, you know? Right. Let's see if Momiji steps it up a little bit. I always think sometimes maybe if someone lands a trick a little sketchy, they might think if they do the same run a little better, it's going to get them more points. But you actually, you get docked a bit too for doing the same exact tricks. So even if you do better, you still might not over, you might not get a higher score. Yeah. I mean, especially if you land the first run how you want. You might as well go for something. You can't bring them both with you. Agreed. Well, she needs to get on the phone with Aoi. Yeah. <laughs> so, Momiji will stay with her first run score of a 6.2. Haisa, current leader. Will she need a higher score? Probably not, but it can't hurt. Still gonna have to come out and put down three solid tricks. 
in the single trick section. I mean, see, this is what I'm talking about. She ups the back tail with the no slide shove behind her. And the front oh. shove. So smooth. Ah. The tray flip. Still, though, I mean, it is hard to give out a higher score to a run that wasn't perfect, but hey, let's see how she finishes here. It was an incredible run. So now, definitely not going to prove that score. Yeah, but, but she had nothing to lose. Yeah. But we do talk about how you can't repeat tricks in single tricks that you did in your run on the same obstacle. True. There's, you always got to consider that. But Haisa's not going to run out of tricks. No. Fortunately for her, she can do most of them. Haisa's second line score is a 6.0. So the line section is in the, in the books. There's your leader. We'll be back with single tricks. Street League Skateboarding has been brought to you by Bok Clothing. We make noise, not fashion. By Vivo, patrocinadora oficial das manobras do Street League 2023. By the all-new Chevrolet Montana. The pickup, less weight and more. Let's go. And by Rumble Sports. Download the Rumble app today. Your home for exclusive SLS content. Quando eu vesti pela primeira vez meu vestido da fadinha, eu nunca tinha pensado que a minha vida iria mudar por completo. Keeping it going here in Sao Paulo today. No problems at all. And let's take a look at the highest scoring line presented by Vivo. Of course, that is from Haisa, 7.6. And no surprise here, she put it down. Ending it with that big nose grind. I mean, it's just incredible to watch her. She's like those one in a generation type of skaters. Line section is complete. Getting ready for single tricks. And this is the re-rack brought to you by Baugh Clothing. Isabelli is going to be coming in first, followed by Keith, Mariah Duran, Yumika Oda, Momiji Nishia. And then Haisa gets to take last cracks at it. Five single tricks. A maximum of four of those scores will count. Or a skater could do, take one from the line section and three from single tricks, either way. Isabelli coming in for her first of five single tricks. She's got to make up a lot of ground here. Solid front board. Playing it smart. Clean. Clean, definitely not the hardest trick she could possibly do, but it's good to get a score down, put some pressure on the rest of the people. 3.5 is an improvement over both of her line scores. Kay Oldenboving in. Oh yeah, half cap, no slide, 270, classic Kate. Classic, still very sick trick. Not many people are doing that on the hubba. 
anytime you're coming fakey at a Haba, it's, you're adding a level of difficulty. And then spin out. Double ham. Half cap nose definitely held the finish. And we've seen a lot of times in the past on these SLS courses that are brand new with brand new cement, trying to spin out of anything, not easy. Yeah, Sticks. the concrete's definitely a little grippy. 4.5. New leader, Kate. Mariah Duran had a great first run. See if she can keep it going. Oh. Front lip. Just holding on. So everybody so far playing it smart and safe, doing good tricks, but not their absolute best, trying to stack points. Three skaters from each group advance. So this is the second of two groups. Mariah Duran, new leader. We see a lot of changes at the start of each group as we get towards the end. Things work themselves out. Yumika Oda. Gap back Smith. Yeah, definitely a sick trick. And I like that obstacle, Gap Back Smith. The judges weren't really scoring that that high, though, in the first group. You're right. That's a pretty good one, though. 5.1. Yeah, still about the same as a lip slide on the big rail. That was a 4.9, so. Yumika, leader. Momiji in for her first try. Oh, I yeah. love that. It just looks great. Front salad. Front side dressing grind. Thousand Island. <laughs> <laughs> On the square rail, too. Always a little tougher. Six point two. So new leader again, Momiji Nishia. Ice is in fifth, but that doesn't mean a thing right now. All she got all she has to do is what she does. Like that from blood. <laughs> That's just something you don't see people do that easy. Front blunt, the big rail, coming out to regular. Locked in, popping out. There's Front nothing. blunt on the BB Seguros replay. <laughs> yeah, it's just perfect. No sketch. Yeah, she figured it out. New leader. 15.4 overall score. Getting that 7.8. This, this is a tough group right here. Isabelli. Yes, especially throwing Isabelli for her first Super yeah. Crown ever. Trial by fire. Yeah. Clean front 50. Which is great. It's still like, she did the 50 perfect. But watch the bobble when she pops. You can see her back foot lagging up there. Oh! Yeah, it, it's just, you can tell those nerves are still there. It doesn't quite look as solid as she usually looks. We did see a switch front 50 down that same rail from Paige. So the judges have an idea of a level in their head. Front 50 gets a 3.3. Kate, in sixth, looking for her second single trick score. Half cap trip. 
Clean. Clean. Kate always does her own bag of tricks. Almost inevitably, you're not gonna see her necessarily just straight charge the big rail. She's gonna get tech on some other section of the course. Yeah, she skates her own way, which I think is really sick. Gets tech on the hubba, but you know, it's it's hard to score on the smaller on the smaller obstacles, you know? The smaller spots, it's just hard to get that score that Haisa can get easily on the big section. 4-8, good enough to move Kate into second place for now. Mariah Duran. Doesn't need much to move up into those top three. Looked good until it didn't. What happened? Yeah, basically a square rail. <laughs> I think if it was round, she had it all day. But the square rail, you just got to get on top way more. That sharp edge kind of, it like pushed her board down too much primo. Too easy. Backside lip slide. 4.9 moves Yumika into first. And group two has a little bit of advantage seeing the scores from group one. So she knows exactly what that score is going to be. And it's going to be enough for the first spot right now. 7.2 overall score. Momiji. Outside the top three. Just needs to stay on. Oh, wow. Sosky. That's even cooler than a salad grind. <laughs> and more rare. I mean, how many people Susky down big rails? Not many people. None. Kind of sick. She's going like uh, tricks named after people, you know? <laughs> She got the dress and grind, mm -hmm. salad grind, yeah. then the siski. Maybe she's gonna get out of Bennett grind. Maybe the, the Bennett grind, barley grind, yeah. That, that was awesome. I think this has to surpass a back lip score, yeah, 7.2. The crowd. Reacting, because they know what they're going to get. Oh. At the end of the day, no matter how good you are, though, you must make a few of your single tricks. You could have the best line score ever ball too many times in single tricks, and out you go. So it till, still takes some strategy. Isabelli coming in. She is getting away with some fire. Lip slide the big rail, but again, that back foot is just wobbling. Oh. Barely got that on the tail. Four point nine. Isabelli moving on up, still not in the top three. See, I, this is where I think Aisa should look at that. And just she could cruise her way into the finals. Backboard shove out, not quite. All right, Mariah Duran looking for her second make. Single tricks. Ooh. Coming 
off clean that time from Feeble. Yeah, she got her back foot all the way over on the tail just to make sure that locked good. Tiger cam replay. Mariah, front feeble, picture perfect. And definitely keeps her hopes alive. 7.2, she moves into the top three. So there you see, Haisa out of the top three for now. So it demands that she makes some tricks. You go back for that back tail again and do more than you need to, or just step up to a front lip and take the points. Personally, I would just take the points. I mean, she's done enough already, but we'll see. You know, Chloe didn't listen to me, and she made it to the top spot. <laughs> Momiji. Just trying to stack more points. A make is going to do it. You know, she doesn't have to do that yet either. She needs to put down one more trick to get the points and then drop the hammer. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I just think the confidence level out there is just surpassed. All right, now we see. What does she do? She's got three tries left. She's got to make, essentially has to make two tricks. She's good enough to not compromise. Yeah. Or maybe the back tail is her version of the compromise. That's what that. I think. I mean, it, it's just becoming one of those things where a back tail for her is just as easy as a lip slide. It's messed up. It's messed up. Yeah, there was no, no doubt. When she landed that, she was just already looking to do her next trick, and she's not in the line section. Yeah. There you go, 8.0, thumbs up, handled. Isabelli stacking points though, now she's trying to drop low scores, she's trying to get rid of that 2.3, oh. stepping up. Respect, that's the first, uh, the first time we've seen someone try the kink grip. Kate, down in sixth. She's got scores. Trying to put one more up. Oh. Mm. Kind of a repeat. Back foot bouncing off. Gonna have one more crack at it. Mariah Duran. Doesn't need to do much right now. Let's put something down. Uh. All in. Yumika Oda in next. She's in third place. Looking for her fourth score. She's gonna get it. Crooks. Straight strategy all the way through. Everything she's doing, she it looks like she knows she's gonna make it. Yeah, it, it's definitely, she had the playbook before she got here. Sticking to the playbook. Yumika gets the 5.8 to move into second place. Momiji in next, she's in third. Just Anything she puts down is going to move her into the lead. Yeah. I mean, 
mean, she's going for like nine club status. Yeah. So she could go for six club status. But hey, we're not going to question it. No. For now. I mean, she's still in third, so <laughs> she's all right. It's just one of those things. Not necessary at this point. Yeah. She's not safe. Isa coming in, current leader. T stance. Back Smith, just so easy. It's crazy how close her feet move together. Yeah, she slides that front foot back so far. It's almost weightless on there. Yeah, it's all weight over the back truck, yeah. back foot. <laughs> Flexing on everybody. 7.1. Having fun stacking points. 30.5 overall score. Here's the re-rack now, presented by Baugh Clothing for the final single trick attempts in group two of the women's knockout round here in the SLS Super Crown World Championship. The pressure's on those top three on your screen. Kate, Isabelli, and Mariah have to make their tricks or they go home and watch tomorrow's final from the sidelines. Kate coming in first. Needs a seven for even a chance to get into tomorrow's final. Here we go. There you go, backboard, shove it. Landing like a water skier, but hanging on. Uh, is that enough? I am so curious. It is one of the Tekker tricks we've seen, but she didn't land it perfect, and it was definitely on the smallest rail in the park, so we'll see. I don't know. That might have been a little too much power slide. Markoy giving her props. Yeah. 5.8, doesn't get it done. But a great showing nevertheless. Kate out here ripping. Isabelli. I think 50-50 the whole kink rail is more than an eight. Yeah. She paid the price. Last try, here we go. Oh! She committed. Couldn't hang on, that is a long double kink. I would say that's like, well, we might have a stat on that, but it looks about 40 feet, we probably gotta grind. Yeah, we, there has to be official stat somewhere. Andrew, get on that. <laughs> Andrew, Mariah, get the tape measure up. <laughs> Mariah Duran on deck. She only needs a 2.8 to move into the top three, but that doesn't mean she guarantee her spot because there's still the top three still to skate. Wow. Kicky back 50. That's huge. That is huge. Puts a lot of pressure on the top three. Tiger cam replay right here. Sean, talk us through it. All right, kickflip locked in both trucks. Perfect on the hub, a kickflip back 50. Such a hard one to aim. And a lot of people will miss either truck on the top, but she locked in perfect. Right, you go to like a fake feeble. Exactly. Brothers, chiming in. 6.0, good enough for third place. Momiji Nishia just got bumped into fourth. So Momiji is gonna have to make her last trick. See, this is where Momiji could just lip slide the rail, but. Oh! Ah! She does not listen to reason. No. Does the crook nolly heel, sticks it like a champ. She will be going to the final. Yeah, that. <laughs> so that's it. You I know, mean, I gotta stop talking about strategy here. <laughs> No one's listening and everybody's making it through. Crook, nollie, heel when you absolutely have to 
is just, it's, it's insane. Not smart, but awesome. How about that? <laughs> exactly. It's good for the show. Great for the show. 7.7. .7. Was that a gasp on too low or? Mariah just got bumped back out. She was going to the final for about five seconds. Yeah. Top three are set. It's going to be Haisa, Momiji, and Yumika. This one's for the crowd. Oh. Ah, taking the hip shot. Back tail shootout. It's good, good practice for tomorrow. Yeah. Haisa has one last trick. I would just walk off the course if I was <laughs> It's fun to see what people try, though, when it doesn't matter what, what happens. Well, nose blunt. The crowd gets what they came out for. Haisa Leal, defending Super Crown champ, heading back to the final against five more of the world's top skaters. Let's take a look at tomorrow's finalists. Chloe Cavell, the phenom from Australia. New blood, Paige Hine from the USA. Aoi Uimura, the rookie here, going to the final. Haisa Leal, the young veteran from Brazil. And then the two skaters from Japan, not to be trifled with, Momiji Nishia and Yumika Oda. You see, Paige Hine will be skating tomorrow. She got the highest scoring trick presented by Accelerator, Active Energy, with a switch frontside 50-50 down the big stack. 8.3. Congratulations, Paige Hine. See you in the finals. So much more skating still to come today with the men's knockout rounds and tomorrow finals for both women and men here from Sao Paulo. It's been quite a day, Sean. It has been. It's been a wild one. The men's knockout round begins at 2.30 p.m. on Rumble. And then tomorrow, women's final, 10.30 a.m. Men's final, 2.30 p.m. Sao Paulo time. So congratulations to all the skaters advancing from the women's knockout round into tomorrow's final. Thanks everybody from watching. So for Sean Malto, Andrew Cannon, and all of us at SLS, thanks for watching. We'll see you at the men's knockout round later today on Rumble.